Hi, this is Linda from Hoop Sisters, and today we're going to be working on block B8, which is the pinwheel section of our quilt. You can see all my little pinwheels behind me. So let's get started. The supplies we will, we will need for block B8, besides your instructions of course, is your fabric one, a square of fabric one. You will need a square of your backing. Uh, this is backing 10 if you're doing the three different fabrics your optional wool batting and of course your battleizer. You will need your thread B with a needle for the needle and the bobbin. You'll need your wash away thread. Um, I've already done step one and step two. Step one is to sew the placement stitch on the battleizer. Step two was to place the wool and tack it down if you're doing that step. Step three will be to take your backing fabric and place it on the back of your hoop. And also your fabric one on the front of your hoop. And continuing with the water soluble thread, let the machine tack down both fabrics. So I've completed tacking down my fabrics for my backing and my front. And step four will be to place thread B in the needle in the bobbin and let the machine do all the quilting. The last step for block B8 is to put water soluble thread in the needle only and the machine will stitch placement stitches on all four corners for us to place our pinwheels. Here's a look at our finished block B8 and hopefully you can see that we use the water soluble thread in each corner and it's stitched an area for us to place our pinwheel. So now we'll go ahead and trim up our block. So block B8 is in the middle of our quilt. There are no edges that require binding. So we're going to trim all four edges using our Trimmer by George 2.0. So we'll take the side with the metal edge, turn the front, the face of the block back, and shimmy that metal edge up to the basting stitch. Make sure we have no fabric exposed and use our rotary cutter to trim off the backing and the battleizer. So we'll do that on all four sides. And then after, here's a look at the back. So after all the backing and the battleizer is trimmed off, we turn over the trimmer by George and we place the quarter inch line on the outside basting stitch that held the back down and we trim all the fronts to one quarter inch. So now we're ready to make some pinwheels and place it on these blocks. So now we're going to make our pinwheels. Uh, to do our quilt we need 24 half square triangles and we have a quick way of doing it. It's been around a while but we're going to go ahead and use it on our Elegant Elements quilt. And to do it you will need, on your instructions it tells you, you need a square of fabric 3 and, square, and 5. It tells you what size to cut it. So the best thing to do is to go ahead and spray it down with spray starch, right side up on one of them, and then right side down on the second one that's sprayed with spray starch. The spray starch, it being a little bit damp, and us pressing it will kind of hold it together a little bit. So we press it till it's dry. I'm doing the 9 inch block, so my squares are 10 and 3 quarter inches, but you just follow your directions for your size blocks. So they were all pressed. Now the next step will be to mark this. I'm going to use a friction pen. It could actually be anything because what we're marking is going to be our cutting line, so it could just be an ink pen if you like or whatever you can see. So I'm going to place my ruler corner to corner. And 
and I'm going to mark it corner to corner, um, both directions. So that's all I have to mark. Then I'll take this to the sewing machine and I'll show you on our instructions. I'm actually going to stitch a quarter inch from my marked line on each side going in both directions. So I'll do that and we'll come right back. So here you can see I stitched a quarter inch on either side of my line um, on both directions and now the directions tell us where the red lines are we're going to go ahead and rotary cut. So we're going to rotary cut in between our stitch lines and we're also going to rotary cut horizontal and vertical right through the center. Good idea to just leave it lay flat, don't move it while you're cutting. And then we'll go right through the center horizontally and vertically. So now when we take this apart, you can see that we will have eight half square triangles. So now we'll take these over to the ironing board and get them pressed. So now we're at the ironing board. So we're going to set the seam on the triangle. It doesn't matter which color you have up. We're going to roll back the top and do what I like to call press to the press to the bump there so you get a nice crisp line and then fold it in half and press the seam so we're pressing that half square triangle closed again so you have you have this the next step on all of your triangles is I like to take again a pen, a friction pen works well and kind of eyeball or you can measure if you want and I'll make a little dot at the quarter inch seam allowance at the raw edge point on both sides. And that's just a place for me I need to press that seam allowance back. So I'll open it out, turn it back until I can see that little dot and press that little corner down. And I'll do that on both, both corners. So I'm pressing in my seam allowance because that's where the intersection is going to match, meet up when you do your block, when you sew your blocks together, so we don't want bulk in there. Then I'll take my glue pen, put a little dot of glue there, and I'll just hit that with the iron and it's going to keep that together. So we're going to do this to all of our half square triangles. So now we have a decision to make and this is basically your preference. You're going to take your completed triangles and you're going to fold and it's in your directions, it gives you a, a line to follow 
you're going to fold one edge up. So you have a choice to fold them all exactly the same or you can do them opposite. I think I'm going to go with opposite. And by that I mean on this one I have the pink up, on this one I have the turquoise floral up. So my pinwheel will look like this. If I wanted them all to be the same, it would actually just be this way. So I would have all the pinks facing up and my pinwheel would look like that. So I'm going to go with the opposite effect and I'll be right back and show you how to apply it to your block. This is how I like to get my block ready to attach the pinwheels. On that corner that we pressed in, we're going to place that in the corner of the block, aligning up our two raw edges here and here, and then we'll fold over the corner that will create the pinwheel, and I know that's the fold over because of my tack down stitch here for placement. And I like to keep <clears throat> this seam allowance away from the corner. I'm trying to avoid getting any bulk in the corner so that when we sew our blocks together and apply our sashing that there's no bulk in the corner. It's just too difficult to work with. So Then I'll put a pin there. So you can see when I actually sew my corner together right there there will be no extra bulk from the pinwheel. So we just align our two raw edges, fold this up, keeping that away from the corner, press it down, and then I can put a pin in. And now I'm ready to take this to my sewing machine and baste around the outside edge. So I'm ready to stitch it on. I have wash away thread in my needle and just a regular bobbin thread in. And I'm going to based around the outside edge, staying within my seam allowance. So I'm about an eighth of an inch from the cut edge. And the wash away is there just in case I go in too deep and it shows. So it'll wash out. So here's block B8 with my pinwheels on it, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like in the completed quilt. So I've got my pinwheel section pinned up on my design wall. This is block B8 that we just stitched, and you can see how the pinwheels are coming together. I think it's very cute. After you get all of your pinwheels placed on your blocks and you sew them together and sash them, you are going to have a small hole in the intersection of all of your seams. So you can make some cute little yo-yos depending on the size of your block. This is a nine inch block and this is a three and a half inch yo-yo. It was a three and a half inch circle before I turned it into a yo-yo. And when I put it over that intersection, it fills it in very nicely. So I hope you enjoyed the pinwheel section of your Elegant Elements Quilts.